Jinkies. Jeepers. Zoinks. <laughs> Come on, gang. Let's split up and look for more clues. Quick, do something, Scoob. <laughs> Get me down from here, Dinobot. That's me, Dog Wonder. Well, in many cases, there are much younger children who don't understand that there are real people behind the character voices. And so usually they're kind of excited to, to learn that that's how the magic comes about. Don Messick did the voice of Scooby-Doo originated, and Don was just brilliant at breathing life to that character. With Don Messick, he would simplify it with, well, it's a dog, and uh, there are different types of dogs, and he was given an idea of what the dog's personality was like. Well, I think Don got into the psyche of an animal <laughs> it was very much like Scooby-Doo. That dog was alive, <laughs> and uh, it, it was, was a being, a human being. And here's a boldy old dog. He just invested that character with so much personality and made him so funny that it's impossible not to love him. Do I get a Scooby star? We'll look for one after we're off the camera here. Uh, okay. <laughs> Scooby dooby doo. I just got the idea for a trap that'll solve this mystery. Listen. I would have to describe Fred as being uh, the guy in the group who has a license. And that's why the other kids have him around, so he can drive the mystery machine. Hang on, gang! Fred really is uh, kind of the all-American guy. He's, uh, he's got a good heart. The way that I got the part for Freddy, I was doing a stand-up routine. And within this routine, I did like a dog and cat fight, a lot of, you know, and this executive said, you know, we're doing a show called Scooby-Doo, and there's a dog, why don't you come in and audition for Scooby-Doo? And I said, great. So I went over there, and I got the script, and I saw Shaggy. This is me, funny character. You know, and I'm always playing the straight guys. And so I sit down, I meet Casey, and he's just fantastic. I said, well, what part are you reading for? And he says, oh, I'm reading for Shaggy, and I want to read for Freddy. The character I wanted to do was Fred. And so they said, no, we, we'd like you to read the, the other character, Shaggy. I said, oh, OK, well, uh, what is it you want? And uh, he said, well, come up with something. And uh, what I came up with was, Scoobo, buddy, old friend, old pal, it's me, <laughs> your friend Shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> now that's cool, Unc. They called me back three times. And the third time, apparently, they, they, uh, they saw what they liked. And so they, they hired me. Well, gang, I guess that wraps up another mystery. They showed me a picture of Velma, and I realized that she looked a lot like me, except she didn't dye her hair. But basically, I looked a lot like the picture. My glasses! I can't see without my glasses! It was not my real voice, but it wasn't that far away. Velma lisps, I lisp. Velma has kind of a slightly kooky voice. I guess my voice is slightly kooky. I think my character set a good example for girls. They didn't have to follow around. They could lead. They could have the ideas. That's what I always liked about my character. That's your cue, Daph. Right. Oh, no. My finger's stuck in the keys. I can't work the trick. Danger-prone Daphne did it again. Danger-prone Daphne. Yeah. She would fall down chutes and get the rest of the kids in trouble. Wait! Help me! The girl that had played Daphne for a short period of time had left and gone to New York to get married. Nicole, Jaffe, David was my roommate and said, get in here. They're looking for Daphne. You can do Daphne. Jeepers! I'm doing Velma. We could, we could do this together. This would be great fun. She was very right for the character. So when the other girl left, I, I called Heather and I said, come down right away and audition for this because I think you'd be terrific. I didn't always listen to her, but for this I did. And I auditioned and got the part. And that was my first, really my first job as an agent was getting her this. Flashing through the sky, he's a go-go guy. 
stronger than a train with a so-so brain. He's fearless, scareless, a little too careless. Dino Mutt is a go-go dog person. Dino Mutt and Blue Falcon were really favorites of mine. I enjoyed them very, very much. So you see the storyboard first, and you see what kind of a character it is. He's authoritative. So usually when you do any kind of an animated cartoon, they'll say, well, this character has bravado. He's a superhero with great bravado, so everything he says is up-tempo. Wrong, lowbrow. Crime is never smart. Blue Falcon used his wits and the wits of Dynomutt to help him out. But usually Dynomutts would get klutzy, bumbling and bumbling -er. You missed him, dog wonder. Oh, sorry about that, Bia. Mm. Frank is one of the best voice people in the history of the world. <laughs> he could do monsters, he could do thunderstorms, almost anything with his voice. He was a robot dog, so he could extend all these things. So for a while, we would put those sounds in, and that was one thing that I did, and I've always done, is goofy sounds and noises. When I was looking at Dynamite, I thought, hmm, it's a goofy dog, and Blue Falcon, I mean, these are two bumbling superheroes. And I remember a character, and, uh, you know, he was kind of, he was really goofy. He's like, did you see that? Yeah, I already spotted it. I loved that so much. And then I thought, well, if I bring it back a little bit and still make it kind of a silly, uh, you know, uh, goofy dog, it could be a lot of fun. Right, Blue Falcon? I rhyme my dog wonder. <laughs> Howdy there, Scooby-Doo! Each character has their own nuance. That's the beauty of it all. And uh, when you're doing your thing, you're in another world, like, like you're doing a broadcast of some kind. Putting your mind in a fantasy. That's what it's all about. Scooby-Dooby-Doo! And Dynamite, too. <laughs>